Good afternoon. Today is the 24th of November. And uh, we've had a switch over of the two um, MGs that uh, actually MG Motor UK have very kindly said that I can have over two weeks. So I've now got a different one. V2021 MG HS 1.5 exclusive manual. I will link to in the description below, but this is a 2021 MG ZS 1 litre exclusive manual. This is a car that I have reviewed before on the channel. Um, so this is not the full review. It's not the full review. This is just a week's sort of ownership experience with the car, which we don't get to do necessarily with tweed jacket reviews. Normally we get a couple of hours of a car and that's it. And this uh, was the case when we filmed this car at Summit Garage back in, uh, back in May. I think we were the first people to film an MG ZS 1 litre manual. Straight away we can see that the key, unlike the HS we just had, is not colour coded to the car, it is red. But well, we've still got the same keyless entry and the same door handles. This is a physically smaller car um, than the, the HS, physically a lot smaller but a lot of the nice same features I think that steering wheel is virtually the same and uh, we've still got the same buttons on the um, electric seat similar window switches but if you know they're not sort of chromed or anything and that's exactly the same and so is this the car though actually starts at under £20,000 it's over £4,000 cheaper um, than the HS 1.5 uh, manual and exclusive trim so you want, we want to save a bit of money and not necessarily go for um, such a big car I mean this is a better size for me personally we've actually got full digital instruments in this car as well the nearest rival to this car is the Sanyol Tivoli we own a, a Tivoli albeit a pre-facelift one so you'll be hear me referring to that quite a lot um, which won't really be a surprise because uh, you know many markets will be our direct rivals One of the main things we can see here is it might be a bit easy to confuse the fuel filler flap and the Bonnet release just make sure I don't do that. Uh, that's something they haven't altered from the pre-facelift car Which I actually tested for a week and on two jacket reviews Oh actually uh, with we actually did two of those um, we're not talking about the electric version of the EV that's really a very different car but uh, <laughs> when I finish this very brief kind of look at the car we'll have a more detailed walk around a little bit later um, that I'll film later in the week then I'll then um, you know we can see the instruments and all that sort of stuff and all safety features but I'll just show you we've got the boot that actually has a movable floor you can get a spare wheel I'm gonna leave this in the high position because I need to go and pick up the bicycle which you would have seen um, towards the end of the uh, second HS report and I need to see if it's actually gonna fit in this in this car I hope it does it's all I can say viewers because I've not got a backup plan still absolutely loads of room in here although it's not quite as enormous as the HS and you can't actually alter the backrest angle and there's no there's no rear armrest there's no um, vents there there is though in this version of the ZS and only this version of the ZS a panoramic roof which we'll have to look at later no electric tailgate on any of the petrol ZS's I can't remember if you get that on the ZSCV now you never used to but I'm gonna just uh, stop recording now because I'm going to put that stuff to cover up these seats in this car but it's done less than 1200 miles so I don't get uh, anyway damaged by a bicycle and I will list the full number of uh, tweed jacket episodes we've done all the ZS variants now Right, 
viewers. Just outside the bike shop, that was quite a struggle to get that in, but I have. It just about clears the tailgate. I've had to put um, the handlebars around that way. But yes, average size um, bike does go in the back. So go home now. Right, viewers, it's the next day. The uh, light didn't really uh, sort of work out yesterday for me to do the full walk around, so I should do it now before we run out of light again. It's that time of year. It's a bit depressing, really. Keyless entry. The passenger seat in this car is manual, although the uh, driver's seat is electric. If you're familiar with the pre-facelifter petrol ZS, then quite a few things have changed. We've got this soft touch material on the dashboard. I presume this is like a vinyl or something. It's, it's nothing to do with leather. I mean, the seats are Artico leather rather than real leather in this car. Not a massive problem, really. It depends on what you, what you want. The doors are hard plastic, but then a lot of cars in this class, and particularly at this price point, have hard plastic doors. Sanyong Tivoli, the Dutch Duster are the main rivals for this car, and they also have it like that, which is, you know, a problem, I suppose. One thing you'll notice with this car, that is just a standard incandescent bulb there, and the car does not have any form of rear courtesy light, not even the, the facelifted MG ZSCV has that. Rear space is actually very good. You do need to move these headrests up, someone like me, otherwise they're in the wrong place on the back, which you can just do actually with the um, back of your neck sometimes. There we are. Over the pre-facelift car, this one litre manual wasn't even available until about April and May this year, so um, there wasn't an equivalent to this the previous, sort of the, pre the June 2020 facelift. Um, we've got rear USB ports, still not got a rear armrest, but only available on the face of the Zeta TV. Pockets do feel sort of good, it's just, it's just a nicer place to be, particularly with this exclusive feature to the one litre manual, at the moment anyway, um, the panoramic sunroof, most agreeable. The seats do fold 60-40 but um, this seat belt could snag actually. There's nowhere to put that when you're folding them. They don't actually, uh, they don't actually uh, sort of recline for the race you pass like we do in HS either. These door handles still do feel very nice. They feel nice quality. Certainly the cabin quality in here is, is better than a Dacia Duster. It, it's probably on par with a face with the Sanyo and Tivoli. I will make a lot of references to that because the cars are similar in some ways. I mean, there's about the same amount of rear leg room. The boot, though, is much bigger than a Tivoli. Red stitching you'll see everywhere, which um, was something that in, in the, the pre-facelift MG3s. Very nice in the Battersea blue, although, do I spot fake eggs? Oh, dear me, viewers. Mm -hmm. It's not good, viewers. I don't like fake exhausts. Oh well, never mind, not the only manufacturer who do that. 70 or 80,000 mile warranty, of course, on one of these. The boot actually has adjustable height feature. I can actually put that down, which I'm going to do. I think I can do this with one hand. There we go, look at that. With that, you get 448 litres of space. And if we just lift that up, Again, you can actually get a spare wheel for this car, though this one doesn't have it. Boot light, not an LED one. Not that it matters to most people. This parcel shelf I found very, very flimsy when I was taking it out. I didn't break it or anything, but just be a bit careful with it. Also, these little things here, I, I, I don't know, don't know how far I, I trust those. Um, just be careful again. But the other bits of trim in the boot feel pretty good. It feels, it feels well made. I think the boot actually 
slams a, a bit better on this than it does on the HS. Part LED rear lights. The wheels on this are completely different from the pre facelift car. They're still 17 inches on this top exclusive model, but they have a lot more sidewall on the tyre, which makes it look a lot better. I do like this Battersea blue colour. It is different from the Brixton blue that that HS was. Very slightly different. Now, it's not quite as spacious in here as an HS, but you wouldn't expect it to be. It's a physically smaller car. Again, massive, massive door bins in here. I'm going to close that door because it's very cold today. One way in which this car does score over the, um, um, the Tivoli is the fact that it's got a 360 camera. If I just turn the car on and the switch is on this side rather than that side, which is on an um, NHS, we'll have to press that button twice. I'll reach straight for this mute button because I know the video radio is going to come on, which is very annoying. Oh, no, no, no. Right, yes, here we go. Oh, very quick, you see. We can actually turn that camera on. And there we go. If I were to put this into reverse, you'd, actually, why don't you need to? You've got a reversing camera here. And I can cycle through the cameras like that. The only thing is, the top-down camera shows this is a white car. Of course, you can get a white car, but, you know, we won't uh, do that. There we go. It's quite handy, isn't it? Let's just see if we, what happens if I press that. Yeah, the 3D view is really, really weird, but it is quite helpful in some ways. And if you're, if you're going along, and I can't demonstrate this without a passenger filming this, so I, I won't be able to at the moment, it does actually, when you go around corners, it shows you what the corner's like, so you don't sort of crash into the kerb with your alloy wheels, which is very good. I'm very impressed. So we'll just close that. We'll have a look at the car menu first and see what we've got. Not as many features as, as an HS, and not, many feature, not as many features, particularly as a ZSE, but even the pre-facelift one, because we've got some aspects of the MG Pilot system, but really not all of them. For example, there's no lane keeping assist in this car. Um, there's lane change assist, but that's really not the same. Um, there is autonomous emergency braking, but I don't think we've got things like pedestrian and bicycle detection or anything like that. There's no adaptive cruise control, which again, you would get on an MG ZS CV exclusive, particularly the face of the face of um, ZS exclusive is with the, with the electric powertrain has got a completely different system from this. This system has only been out about two years. It first went into VHS and then this last year. But the, the ZSCV, the new one's got a completely different system again. And when we come to review that car, everyone's been asking me about it. Westby will do it. I have got a car lined up to film, but you might have to wait a little bit for that to happen. So we can go to comfort and convenience. Those are all the, the features we've got. Oh, driving and maintenance. That's just the steering modes. This car's got three mode steering, like a Sanyong Tivoli, um, and I leave that in dynamic all the time. The other two modes for me are way too light. Well, my lady wife likes lighter steering. Um, the lighting, uh, well, find my car when you're using the key fob and other. I don't think is anything really exciting. No, it's actually just the. A soft key here on the steering wheel. You can actually change that to go to your smartphone or whatever you want to do. It's actually quite useful putting up the home button because unless you're familiar with this system, you know that's the home button, you wouldn't necessarily know that. So that's sort of it. We'll go to the settings, which means I've got to press the home button. It's nothing too extraordinary in here. It's just to do with a sort of graphic equaliser and things like that. And this thing called soundstage that I, I don't really what it is it's more like a sort of um one of those little fader sticks you used to get i don't even know what 3d sound means viewers um don't ask me that sort of stuff um dab radio of course go back to here right let's see how long the sat nav takes to boot uh right so i've got the clock on here this video at nine minutes and 18 seconds go i might have to press the button again I think it's loaded, but it hasn't. The new system in the facelift ZSCV is so much faster than this. 
Uh, we... Sorry, viewers, I just realised that uh, I stupidly uh, showed on the sat-nav where we were when I have the home address, so um, if it cut out abruptly, then I apologise. It's not a good thing to really show what it is. I'll have to show you the sat-nav another time, but it takes 25 seconds to boot. That was the main thing, and I was going to look at postcode entry and things like that. We'll, we'll just ignore that for now because I, I don't really want to uh, show show where we where we are. We'll have to go some when we go somewhere else. We'll do that. Right, uh, digital instrument display. This is completely different from the pre facelift ZS petrols. Um, we can go through thing. I'm oh, light bad. If I move it, there we go. Let's hold it just like that. Sorry, viewers. Um, it's just the way it goes on this channel sometimes. Right, current journey. We're not going anywhere. So. That is was reset at um, the depot where the car came from. Um, so I did about 10 miles yesterday, and um, it's 11:68 on the, the, the odometer. So we're going to kind of have to have to minus about 96 every single time we kind of, you know, look at the figures. I'm hoping to get better than 36.3 miles per gallon in this car. Tire pressures. There we are. I mean, it's, it's amazing how, what, what tire pressure is actually showing because it's absolutely freezing in here. Um, there's the battery voltage, and it just shows you if the car's locked, uh, if the lights are on and the doors are open. I think that's it, right. I do like these um, Audi style air vents, if I can get away with saying that and not get sued by certain manufacturers. That is the switch for the mirrors down there, same as an MG3, as are these uh, st um, stalks on here. Sorry about the lighting views, it's a bit annoying. Steering wheel is very similar to an HS as well, and an MG3, but this has got a sort of flat bottom here, with this sort of brushed aluminium effect. Mirror switches look a bit cheaper than an HS, they're not chrome ringed or anything, but this section here is exactly the same. But these vents are the same too. Standard manual handbrake, thank goodness most of you will be saying. Hill descent control, that's charging control off, and that's to turn stop start off. In there we have two USB ports, one is for Apple CarPlay and one is for Android Auto. The pre-facelift cars, it turns out this petrol didn't come with an armrest in the middle of the front, so there is one, and some storage. Of course Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, another way to get to the 360 camera. One thing I do prefer about this car from the HS is the fact that actually you can put the fan speed or the wind levels it calls it, which sounds like something that you have after a curry, um, and then you can adjust the temperature like that. You don't have to go into the menu to do it. Sadly, you have to go into the um, menu to turn on the heated seats and things like that. I think they're only one stage heated seats. In a Sanyo and Tivoli, you get, I'm only talking about the top of range model, which is called the Ultimate, you get an automatic dipping rear view mirror. You get a heated steering wheel. And um, you get tinted glass. This car does not have tinted glass. There is no tint. There's tint on the, on the, on the panel roof, um, which you can see there. And there's the uh, button for operating the shade, which is coming very slowly this way. Just put that on because that's why how other car came. And you don't get adjustable height seat belts. There's loads of little things that this car just simply doesn't have. It's got nice surround view cameras and things like that and full LED headlamps, which I will I will show you. But and also there's no telescopic adjustment for the steering wheel in this car. Which is interesting. The top of the range petrol Tivoli's, they have a more powerful engine. They have things like a, they have things, I think these are like adaptive cruise control. They've certainly got lane keeping assist. And, uh, you know, he did a steering wheel. But you have to, when you're choosing one of these cars and you want to compare it against one like a Tivoli, this one initially looks like the better option. It's a little bit cheaper than top of the range manual Tivoli by maybe a thousand pounds. And it's got a nice panoramic roof. And the, uh, full LED headlamps we'll just go and look at but if you want things like a rear courtesy light and tinted glass and telescopic steering adjustment 
heated steering wheel, you, you can't get them, not even as an option. There are no options available in this car apart from the colour. There you are, you see SAC lighting technology. Right, we'll just look at the engine quickly because uh, I don't want to forget to do that later. Oh no, that's not the bonnet release, it's fuel release. So this is a one litre three cylinder turbo engine developing 111 horsepower. It was actually co-developed with General Motors, which is why in the Astra K and Corsa E, not, not, not the electric Corsa, the, Cor the Corsa before the current Corsa F. Gosh, it's confusing sometimes with, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Vauxhalls and Opals. Um, that was actually in the, the Astra K, the current generation one, and the previous generation Corsa. Uh, I think it was slightly differently tuned, but it's the same engine. And I think the six-speed manual gearbox, though, in this car is actually a different one because on the older General Motors car, you had to pull up to engage reverse where you push down like in a Volkswagen. I don't think it's a Volkswagen gearbox in this. I think it might be SAIC, who were um, Angie's parent company's own gearbox, but I, I couldn't say for definite. Plenty of room, though, to work on this tiny little engine. Um, there is another powertrain available, 1.5 normally aspirated engine which is out of the MG3 which is like 105 horsepower. Um, I don't recommend that engine in this car, it's just simply hasn't got the torque to be able to cope. Um, this has got more torque, it's not got a, the same level of torque as the 1.5 turbo engine which is in the MG HS, that's got 165 horsepower. If they drop that into this it would be a lot of fun. The Samuel Tivoli has a 1.5 turbo petrol engine with 165 horsepower as well which you can get on the top model so again you just got to do your research quite carefully if you're comparing the two because essentially they're very similar in size they are um, you know both with seven year warranties they're both kind of cars that at least were minority interest for some time obviously we own a Tivoli so I can talk about them quite a lot um, and um, they're both very good options. The Tivoli's got a smaller boot, I will say that. Uh, but the rear space is it's about the same, really. But just you know, do your shopping kind of carefully if you are comparing these two cars. Right, I think we've seen everything. We have had a look at the boot already. Um, yes, I think that will be it for today. Got a mission to carry out in Berkshire tomorrow. And I suppose I shall see you there. Right viewers, here we are in uh, lovely Bracknell um, where we just had a pleasant lunch at this little pub here um, because we've been filming Alex from Alex Assets 1961 Rover 100. Um, but we're not really here to talk about that because there is a view of the channel. All I can say is I didn't I didn't die or break the gearbox, <laughs> which is what happens when I drive these really old cars. There was some crunching. There was crunching involved. Oh, I know, I know, it's bad. <laughs> no synchro mesh on first gear. But you get synchro mesh on all the gears in this one, and there are six of them. I don't, I don't think we've done the uh, glove box yet in this, which is uh, actually reasonably large in one of these. No so, for secret documents, is there? Not quite. So, you've driven this car today. It's I the, have. It's only the second sort of Modern really car. new car you've actually driven in quite a long time, unless you're kind of, of course, where you where you work and you get to drive all these all these ones. Um, what have you made of this one? Well, I really like it. It's it's actually more like a normal car than I'd expect. It's got a handbrake. It's got six gears, which is two extra than I'm used to, because I'm used to four. Um, three different types of steering modes. You've got extra light or normal or dynamic, but dynamic is better because you feel more on the road. It's more like a normal feel. But yeah, I, I, I like it. I do. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got to put this into context and that that is what you've been driving every day for <laughs> yeah. quite some time. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, and obviously you're on your on your channel, it's more about 
kind of fixing older cars and driving the older ones, so this is a bit different, but... Yeah, actually, I don't know what I'm doing, really. Is. <laughs> I think your viewers kind of didn't hate the HS. No, no, I didn't hate the HS. The HS was very big, and it felt too big for me, but this one I felt more at home at, and I think if I was looking to get a modern daily driver, I, I might consider this one rather than the HS, because it's a bit more compact and a bit more normal. Yes, um, I, I agree. I think this is a much better size of car for me personally. If I had to put bikes in all the time and I had, you know, children and things, the HS might be an option. But this is over £4,000 cheaper than that car was, which is also, which is also good. Right, I'd uh, better get back now. Alex has uh, got to be on her way as well in the P4. It takes me a little while. <laughs> It does because the steering is ridiculously heavy and you've got to be very careful with the gearbox otherwise you end up... Um, you've got to be delicate. You've got to end up crunching because there's no synchro edge on first and uh, put, trying to put it into reverse when it should be first, which is what I've done. Right, viewers, <laughs> uh, off we go. We shall... Uh, nice to meet you all. Yes, Bye -bye. We, we shall go back to uh, Eastley now. Good morning. Today is... 27th of November and we're off to a place called Clandon which, which is uh, in Surrey there's actually two there's East and West Clandon but we're going to the station just called Clandon just for clarification as we did back in uh, August with the MG3 uh, we're just joining a walking group we've been part of for many years and hopefully when we get there weather will improve very slightly and probably see the drops of rain on the panoramic roof. I don't think so far I've really gone into how this car drives. There are three powertrain options available. The base engine is a 1.5 4 cylinder with 105 horsepower from the MG3. I really wouldn't recommend that engine in this car. It's only available with a five-speed manual gearbox and really the only reason to choose that is you want to save money when you buy the car. The engine lacks a lot of torque, it's just very very underpowered for the size of the car. The powertrain I do recommend is this one litre three-cylinder with 110 horsepower. There is an automatic available as well but this is the six-speed manual which only came in in about April or May this year. Um, it is um, much better. It's, it's my preferred sort of choice of powertrain in this car. The automatic is quite good. It's a twin clutch system. I think it's a seven speed. Could be wrong about that. And it's a you nice know, smooth shifting system. But the penalty you pay is for 0 to 60, it's about 13 seconds. And the fuel economy isn't very impressive. This is by far the best way to get decent fuel economy out of an MG ZS. So far the uh, overall fuel economy uh, this car has done 206 miles since it was last filled up, uh, about 80, 87 or something of those was not done by me and it's averaging about 39 miles per gallon although yesterday on the motorway I got around 45, um, 1.46 which isn't bad for a car like this. There's an automatic stop start which is just cut in. The ride is quite soft in this car. It's actually got a better ride and handling compromise in this car than an HS in my opinion. You do have to rev it a bit harder because it has about 55 less horsepower. And this three cylinder just doesn't have the torque that that 1.5 turbo is. The torque in that is, is amazing. But you know that's okay. The running costs of this car are quite low. I think insurance group is about ten, which is remarkable for a car of this size. You do get some body roll, but then you expect that in a car of this sort of height. Really, it's just kind of normal. It's also very, very high geared. You, you don't want to get caught out in the wrong gear. Otherwise, you just have no acceleration because the torque's not really there. But the trade-off of that is that when you do get onto the motorway, and the blind spot monitoring here will 
definitely help the joint. If you're in sixth gear at 70 miles an hour, it's only turning something like 2,300 RPM. And considering that the Samuel that we have is turning almost 3,000 RPM at 70 miles an hour in sixth, that's quite remarkable. You've just got to remember to change up because the engine's actually very quiet. It makes a it makes a pleasant noise when you when you rev it, like a lot of three cylinder units do. I don't remember if this has a balancer shaft in it or not. Um, it might not do. Uh, it might do. Um, answer in the comment section below. It's actually a co-development with uh, General Motors, and I think I've already mentioned before. And it was available in the. Um, previous generation Corsa and um, the current Astra before the takeover by PSA and they decided to change all the units over. And yeah, it's very smooth. It's that's quite a motorway car. One thing you do notice is we haven't got anything like Lakey we sensed or anything like that. But something like a Sanyon Tivoli, let's go to Kamik, something like that, you, you would get that. But you know, a lot of people who watch this channel don't drive cars with things like Lakey we assist anyway. So, you know, whether that's actually a problem for you is up to you to decide. The thing is, I'm just, we're on a slight incline here, and I was doing 63 miles an hour. I noticed the engine was actually labouring in sixth gear, so you really do have to be a little bit wary, but unless you're travelling actually at 70 on a relatively flat surface of downhill, of course then 5th gear might be a bit more suitable, 6th gear is really an overdrive, I don't think this car would achieve its top speed in 6th gear, um, it's very much there for economy, which, you know, um, someone like me, you screw down to the ground, um, but, you know, you have got the option of choosing 5th. Right, once we get to, to Clandon, we'll conclude this part 1, because I think I've talked for long enough. So here we are at uh, Clandon Station. Um, it was actually a location for the 1983 Michael Caine film, The Jigsaw Man, uh, which um, I wouldn't recommend watching, even though it's directed by Terence Young. It's not very good. Uh, excuse the penguins, they need to come over with us at the moment. Uh, we'll look at the uh, fuel economy and mileage and things a little bit. You know, if rattle of forbidden fuel for focus in the background viewers, that's not necessarily very good. My um, my lady wife's just gone to pay for ticket because my Ringo app has failed, which is very, very annoying. So we'll just wait a moment for her to come back. I'll wait with the penguins, and um, I need the key to actually show you the uh, mile. I think I yeah, need it, otherwise it will just come up with this error message, which I'll show you if you try to... There we go. Smart key not detected. Just wait a second for her to come back with the ticket and then we will continue. Right viewers, we have the key back and we've got the return of the famous MG Bongs. So it's 78 miles of fuel. Um, we should make that back as well. Come on, hurry up. Yeah, so it's 50, just short of 60 miles. It took one hour and seven minutes. Um, average speed 51 miles an hour. Um, average fuel economy 41. It was two degrees for most of the time we were driving, so there we go. Right, viewers, I think that's it for part one. I won't be filming uh, when we get back because it'll be dark. But thank you ever so much indeed for watching this uh, first part of the best ZS ever a week with the 2021 MG ZS 1 litre exclusive manual please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for part two don't forget to like this video leave a comment below and uh, thank you ever so much indeed once again for joining us